Okay, folks, you listen to Filler. I suppose today uh, it's going to be kind of a solo episode. I think this might be the first solo episode I've done in, um, in this series anyway. And it's going to be the first long haul podcast that I've done in a while as well. And I suppose the reason I wanted to, to talk to you guys today is I have been reading report that was released by the United Nations, I believe today also, um, on the subject of climate change. And there is a community online, community of people who I find fairly obnoxious, who are obsessed with this issue, and not in the way that you might seem to think, anyway, not in the way you might seem to think. Um, they believe it's a hoax, and I believe there are many things in this world that are perceived to be true by the great mass of people, but are in fact partially true or not true at all. And they're not issues of the kind of magnitude that someone like Alex Jones would talk about. Uh, he has a he has a habit, that guy. And I can have some respect for him because he talks about some things that other people won't talk about, and he's been right about a lot of things. When I say a lot, if you measure the number of claims he's made that have been insane, like talks about chemtrails, he talks about um, the government putting syphilis in the water system, nutty things. But there are a few things he's been right about. Like in the 90s, this guy was banging on, you know, one day the government's going to be reading all your emails and no one fucking listened to him. And then last year we had uh, Edward Snowden. Um, and of course we had WikiLeaks talking about all this other crazy stuff. And I don't necessarily prescribe to all of that, or subscribe rather, to all of that. But there is a community online that views the concept of man-made climate change. In addition to regular climate change, this is the thing that people don't get, the climate's going to change anyway. But the argument is that human beings are accelerating the effects uh, of that climate change. And when you think about it, I mean, we have, I believe, uh, a ball of plastic roughly the size of Texas, the state of Texas in America, which I believe is the largest state in America floating somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. That's terrifying. And it's completely dreadful. People will often talk about nuclear energy. I think there are problems in nuclear energy. However, I think the the of a well-maintained modern nuclear reactor, the chance, or the risk rather, of a catastrophic overload or an overheating when you're no longer able to cool the, 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 the fuel rods, which is essentially what happens when they go into meltdown. Uh, meltdown being the operative word. Heat is involved, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to keep that water cold. People say, well, they use seawater, which just contaminates all the seawater, and by extension, the sea around it, only in the sense that that water could be contaminated if the reactor goes into meltdown. So you look at Fukushima and you see a situation where you have ancient reactors built on fault lines, which is your second mistake. I mean, keep them up to date. Uh, also, this conception that they can't be turned off. Of course, of course they can be turned off. They're, they're turned off constantly. Um, but if they're turned on and they experience a catastrophic overload or a meltdown or you're unable to contain the reaction past that point, it's very difficult to shut them down. Um, so in terms of nuclear energy, I think that could be a solution to the problem or some of the problems that the United Nations has put forth in this report. And it's not the first report they've published on this topic either. It's not a topic I spend an inordinate amount of my time thinking about, which is sort of bad in a way because it's an extremely important topic. So I'm going to give you a rundown. And these are all things that you and I, the listener, um, I and you, the listener, uh, are aware of. If you're not aware of them, maybe you're aware of them in a subconscious sense. The news talks about it and we, we, we are given information. I believe the theories about the corporate media, which I partially subscribe to. Um, we are fed information. If those, fear, if those theories are correct, we're fed information. When it's simply consume it, consumption is something you need to do. Um, overconsumption is, of course, something you don't need to do. But you need to consume calories or you starve to death and your 
internal organs shut down and you die. Starvation. Um, I, I do think we're fed a lot of this information. And if you consider for a moment the idea that a lot of these large corporate entities and a corporation is, of course, a legal fiction. The reason that corporations, in my opinion, and with regard to the libertarian spectrum, which I am, um, I orbit in its vicinity, in its vicinity. I'm not a, a full, fully fledged libertarian. I'm not an anarcho capitalist. I've dabbled in all of these things in my own head, which I think is the best place for dangerous ideas. And they're all dangerous ideas. I mean, it's not fair to say that anarcho-capitalism is a dangerous idea, but uh, socialism is not. I mean, I believe socialism is a far more dangerous idea than anarcho-capitalism. But having dabbled with it, or perhaps um, uh, bounced it around the squash court inside my head, wherever that squash mo- uh, wherever that squash court may reside, um, up up here, anyway, I came to the conclusion that I think there are too many holes in the theory and that you need a synthesis of both, but you need one far more than you need the other. In my opinion, you need uh, capitalism and free enterprise far more than you need a centrally planned economy. There are millions, billions perhaps, of people who disagree with me, uh, but one of the things those often those people often don't take into consideration is that there are millions, potentially billions more who agree with me, or at least whom I agree with. Um, I've always disliked the the term where you say, well, other people agree with me. Well, yes, that's true to some extent, but what's implied in that is that you have, you are the originator of these ideas. Um, Nothing could be further from the truth. We all stand on the shoulders of giants, after all. And on that note, I want to talk about solutions today, but before I talk about solutions, whether it be a free market solution or a centrally planned solution. Again, perhaps I'll land somewhere uh, between the two, a synthesis of them both. And am I guilty of confirmation bias? Is my conclusion going to be along the lines, very vague lines of my political outlook that I've just described to you in passing? Vagary uh, doesn't really do them justice. Um, they're far more vague than that. If I was to say I prefer uh, a free enterprise, free market system rather than a centrally planned, socialized system, I believe in that. And so these are my solutions to this problem. But before I get into the solutions, I want to talk about, in bullet point form, some of the things that the United Nations has mentioned, a little more than mentioned, if you consider the size of the report, it being the United Nations, a giant bureaucracy, which I don't think is entirely useless, but could do with a little trimming back. As with the European Union, not a UKIP voter, although the UKIP, UK Independence Party identify themselves as a libertarian party. At the same time, they want to increase military spending. So I can't exactly see them in that light, or at least in the light to which they wish to be painted, um, or at least their ideas wish to be painted. They're not a Nazi party, but I won't vote for them. Um, a little too conservative for me. I'm socially liberal, so it's kind of it goes with the territory of libertarianism in my opinion um pro-choice by the way i'm not i'm not ron paul bloody libertarian plus libertarianism did not originate in the united states it originated in britain as with so many other things speaking of britain i'm an anti-nationalist why am i telling you all this stuff by the way telling you all this stuff so that you can understand when i give my conclusions where i'm coming from and some of the internal conflict uh currently being waged inside my own head because a few of these solutions go against um or at least on the face of them they're not meant to go against but unless you know more about my politics you won't really have any bearing from where i'm coming of where i'm coming from with regards to these issues so i'm going to run down for you they talked about obviously the effects of climate change in no particular order these are this is the order i've written them down extreme weather well extreme weather is very obvious (laughs) uh flooding flash floods Forest fires, bushfires, I suppose. Do they call them bushfires in in Australia? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Extreme weather. I mean, and all these things, of course, tie into one another. They tie into one another in the respect that, in respect of the fact that the climate is being artificially changed. As I spoke about earlier, there are people not only who have very extreme views on these issues... But in addition to that, don't believe that this process is even taking place. These people are idiots. 
ladies and gents. I mean, there's really no other word for them, and I don't want to insult them necessarily. It's very easy to have a sort of uh, feedback loop. You learn one thing, then you learn another thing, you learn another thing, and you only listen to one group of people or one perspective on the issue. And so it's a little bit like a broken record. I mean, you can't get out. You can't get out. Um, the the grooves in the vinyl have um, have overlapped to the point where the same segment of the song just plays out. And perhaps in a microcosm, all you're hearing is a beat. And the beat is saying, this thing is not true. There are many things, as I said, that are not true. But I don't believe this is one of them. Um, and yes, has this situation been manipulated and taken advantage of for political gain of course it has every situation which can be taken advantage of this is what you this is the assumption if i was to give you any advice that you should just go forward um assuming i suppose assume this assumption uh that any issue which is able to be politicized will be politicized especially when in the case of the united states you have a hell of a lot of money riding on these elections you can be you can rest assured that it will be politicized uh, climate change is just another issue um, it's a lot bigger than people uh, give it credit. They're quite happy to talk about the minutiae involved in inter-party squabbling before they talk about the fact that we're destroying the planet's ecosystem. But assume for a second, ladies and gentlemen, that the people that say our effect on the environment is not causing it to heat up, you know, that nothing is happening. In fact, there are people that go further than that and say, no, no, it's actually cooling. Well, the cooling element is still... Um, a huge risk, of course. Uh, they, they, they almost hear the phrase global warming and they say, not only do I not believe in that, but I'm going to say that the planet is cooling. Um, if the planet's cooling, then you just have the opposite effect. That's why the phrase climate change is also utilized. You complete fucking mongoloids. Um, so extreme weather, we talked about extreme weather. And there's no other phrase, by the way, for those people. They are idiots. Um, because it's it's a little bit like being a creationist with regard to the to the planet, you know? Um, and it obviously affects the planet as well because you're talking about climate change. Where's the climate changing? On the planet Earth. Where do we live? The planet Earth. This affects us directly for obvious reasons. It is the equivalent of creationism, though. If you can look at video and look at pictures that people have taken and have filmed, filmed and taken in that order, at the North Pole, you can't film a picture or take a, take a video. I suppose you can take a video in terms of the terminology used, but who knows? Uh, the English language is a mess, and that's why I love it. Um, if someone goes to the North Pole, and they're photographing fucking ice caps collapsing into the sea, being eviscerated by the temperature of the water, which is itself, by North Pole standards, still, you know, is heating up, and I suppose by our standards, it's still fucking freezing. But whether or not it's actually fucking freezing, uh, in terms of its actual temperature wherever it lands on the scale. What do they use? Kelvin? Or is Kelvin used for measuring light? Christ. I only study media. So, I, I mean, they talk about, you know, you know, degrees Kelvin and stuff like that there. But um, let's say centigrade. If the centigrades <laughs> are too high, then the ice is going to fucking melt. I mean, you don't even need to study science to understand that. But, of course, the main argument, the crux of their argument as well, is the temperature rising. It's like, well, ice only tends to melt if the temperature that the ice exists within or the environment the ice exists within is moving upwards. I mean, if it moved downwards, then the ice would not melt. The ice would become, you know, it would become more icy, wouldn't it? I mean, the t it would become more icy. The temperature would freeze. It really would be the North Pole. It would be becoming more and more the North Pole every year. Its ability to be the North Pole would be fantastically amplified. Um, so the argument that the planet is, in fact, cooling and not heating up is insane. Because if that were the case, we'd have more ice and not less ice. So we have less ice. So which is it going to be? Is the planet cooling down or is it heating up? I think it's heating up. You don't even need to study chemistry to understand that, or physics. I mean, they all tie into one another, I suppose, um, in a weird kind of way. And, of course, the the physicist is going to tell you that, that his science supersedes the rest. Who knows? I can't, I can't speak with any confidence on that on that issue. I did study chemistry, but I, I still I can't speak with any confidence. I used to doodle. That's what I used to do. Doodle, thinking about the fucking polar bears dying in agony. 
Um, well, they're basically in a hot tub. You know, give it a hundred years. Um, so aside from the weather and the pollution, you take the, the heating or the cooling element out of it. Pretend it's cooling. Hell, screw the cooling. Pretend it isn't taking place at all. Pretend the temperature in the North Pole is exactly the same as it was a hundred years ago. We're still messing up the planet, all right? <laughs> because we're dumping vast amounts of shite into the oceans and we're burying it under the land or within the land, I suppose, uh, under the surface of the land and on top of it. I mean, landfill sites. You should see these fucking things. You have seen these fucking things. Everybody's seen these fucking things. But humans have this weird disconnect between what they see and what they know and what they choose to acknowledge. Yeah, so you see it happening, but you're not going to admit it to yourself. Because if you admit it to yourself, you've got to start doing something about it. I feel like the human species, with regard to its problems, I mean, it takes a holocaust before you form a United Nations. You know? Uh, that's, that's the really depressing thing. It takes really egregious shit to go down before we start fucking listening. And I'm guilty of it. I'm not sitting here as some guy going, well... I've always been perfectly apprised of the issues and the dangers in my own mind. And if I could only, you know, encourage the rest of you to wake up, as Alex Jones would say, um, and I suppose innumerable other people would say in separate scenarios, but in this scenario, wake up to the craziness that's going on all around you. I feel like the human species is a little like me and my alarm clock. Yeah, I've centralized the issue. I've personified it within myself. It's the height of arrogance. Uh, but if I could boil the human species down, perhaps it would be me and my alarm clock. I'm known among my friends for not being very punctual, but that extends to early morning punctuality as well. Um, I'm, I'm impunctual across the board. A univer There's a sense of universality to my impunctuality. Um, that didn't sound quite right there. I feel like the human species is that that kind of thing where... You keep pressing the snooze button on the alarm clock and it's not until, you know, your job started like half an hour ago that you're like, holy shit, I need to get my life sorted out. And you're on your way to work when this will never happen again. It will never happen again. I will, I will be on time from now on. I was, I'm going to make a change in my life. I'm going to become a new person. I'm going to travel, broaden my mind, you know, um, meet a pretty girl and fucking, I don't know, go canoeing in the Ganges, on the Ganges, through the Ganges, covered in human slime, um, which is not a racist retort, by the way. The Ganges is a very unsanitary river. There's always one guy out there who's like, you've just insulted 1.2 billion people in India, Lewis. How'd you feel? Um, and those are the 1.2 billion that we've accounted for in the census. Uh, and those, those numbers could have been fucking fudged. And this ties into the global warming thing, because, of course, one of the main problems we have is overpopulation. And I'm not too fond of the idea of children. In fact, to some extent, I spoke about my politics earlier as a sort of preface to this. So hopefully you'll understand where I'm coming from. There's no point in you having kids if either they or their kids, as in if you had three kids today, boom, three come out at the same time. Not only have you increased, if everybody did that, the planet's population would increase at roughly 50% a generation. Two people have three kids. That's one extra kid. Yeah. If you have one kid, you're China. If you have two kids, theoretically, the population levels stay about the same. Unless there's a war, in which case you just have loads more kids. But what if there's not a war? Well, the war's over. Have loads more kids. Um, it's a little bit like, you know, you know, pass go, collect 200 pounds. Pass the second square on the, on the Monopoly board, collect 200 pounds. Pass the third square on the Monopoly board, collect 200 pounds. It's just the same thing. It's like, what are you going to do? Well, we'll have kids or we'll have kids. And um, I feel like that's a choice that's being made, even if it is declining as a lifestyle choice. And that's what it is, by the way. Anybody that says they have this great urge to reproduce, to spawn, and I don't dislike kids. If you have two kids, we're fine. If you have one kid, great. But here's a way we could solve the problem. Stop encouraging people to have kids. Many of the people who do have kids, who don't want them, had kids for either social reasons, either they wanted to get out of a tight spot, or they wanted to lift themselves out of poverty. Uh, this is particularly a problem for women, especially from poorer backgrounds, because if you, if you, if you live in a poorer background and you didn't have a great relationship with your father or your mother or your brothers or your sisters... 
you see as a solution to lift yourself out of that poverty uh or, or you're chasing normality you had a very abnormal upbringing by your own standards unless you live of course in an area where everyone's like that and of course no no one is exactly the same as anyone else so perhaps even without the communal element let's just say everybody's from a single mum household and the, the mum's got too many kids and she's you know she she doesn't know how to raise them and is it really her fault because she came out of that environment as well you look at television and you see what the ideal of normality is you see what normality is perceived as in a popular sense um what tends to be the norm and you want that and you see that as a way to lift yourself out of poverty now that's in britain imagine the situation in parts of sub-saharan africa where you have elements of the sharia still in place you have elements of the animist uh tribalistic uh systems as holdovers from centuries gone by still in place Population control is a huge problem because there's no point in having kids if your kids are going to die of starvation because there's so much of a strain on the resources and the planet's ecosystem is damaged to the point where there's a huge reduction in the amount of arable, uh, you know, farmland. Less farmland you have, we use something called the Haber process, which is where we introduce nitrogen into the soil. It's one of those things no one gives a shit about. You know, many people, not necessarily anybody that's listening to this, watching the fucking X Factor. Ask them who, um, uh, who, who the originator of that process is. You know, they're not going to know. They're not going to, they're not going to know who that guy is. They're going to not, not going to know who Fritz Haber is. They don't care. They don't care. And that's, I mean, it's the same kind of thing. People don't care about things till they need to care about things. This situation with Russia, people knew that Putin was a bit of an asshole. And sure, they even took this gay rights thing with his Olympic Games, his Winter Olympic Games, seriously. But it's not until he's literally crossing the border into the Crimea that people really start going. And then, of course, you hear people with half-baked ideas of, about the um, about the internal politics within Russia, about the motivations, um, about the Cold War, although they probably didn't live through it. And if they were living through it, they were probably doing the equivalent of watching The X Factor today. Mm, threat of thermonuclear war, I can understand that to some extent but as the stakes rise higher and higher as they're raised higher and higher the apathy on the part of the population becomes more irritating to perceive from the outside looking in uh, and i think it's a large segment of the population it isn't the whole population and as with the child rearing population the people who are absolutely desperate much of it comes from um i, w- I don't want to say subliminal messaging because that has a lot of conspiracy based connotations but it is it comes from that perception often um often sort of proliferated by state power often proliferated by religious power in many countries that normality is children normality is marriage um and many other things i don't believe that a system which is designed to subjugate women and is now a little fuzzy around the edges because of course we have gay marriage now and that's great I don't like the institution, but if you're gay and you want to get married, then that's perfectly fine by me. Uh, and, and it's not it's something that requires my permission. And I'm glad that a few days ago that, that law was brought into effect. Um, but I don't necessarily think it's a scenario whereby the law needs to be passed. Uh, I think the collusion between the state and the institution of marriage has always been a bit of a creepy one. And... I think I said before that it is an institution that was designed to subjugate women. Not so much just subjugate them, um, but to control them as property, whereby you could say, well, this this woman has my children and I have the right to, you know, to to take my kids back and by extension her and no one else can breed with her because, and that's why it took like, I mean, divorce. We talk about gay marriage, divorce like a hundred years ago. You were look up, you know, a, a map of the world and have all the countries that had divorce come up in green um and you know you're gonna you're not gonna see hardly any i mean it's just not the case you might have divorce at very high echelons of the societies uh you know that were involved maybe if you were if you were you know upper class you could have a divorce i mean one of the most famous divorces in history was henry the eighth uh divorce from what was it someone of aragon Catherine of Aragon was it which essentially started the uh 
well, it was it was a heavily proliferating factor in the schism between England and the Church in Rome during the sort of early Renaissance, mid Renaissance. Um, but as I say, this has been largely about climate change and other issues. Um, I mean, I think some of the solutions just to round off here to this problem, and I mentioned this earlier, almost go against the grain uh, of libertarian political theory. And to some extent, uh, they adhere to libertarian political theory, but in the case of many libertarians out there, especially Christian libertarians, who I, I find quite obnoxious, I, I despise social conservatism completely. I mean, it's one of the ideologies that I really, I really fucking hate social conservatism, uh, which of course, if you're gay, has been, and or a woman, um, has been the cause or Irish, of Irish extraction. I mean, I'm of Irish extraction on both sides. Removed about 100 years on my father's side and about 50 on my mother's. Um, social conservatism has been the cause for a lot of hatred, a lot of discrimination, anti-Semitism for one thing, especially towards gay people, um, people who were gay, both gay and lesbian, and towards people uh, who happen to be born with the wrong genitalia, or at least the genitalia which is incompatible with the genitalia of the ruling class. I suppose it is compatible if you want to go there, but it's um it's not the same. Um and I'm not a feminist, I'm a humanist, I believe in human equality. But if I were to say to you that aside from or in addition to population control, through the changing of attitudes towards concepts like um child rearing and marriage to some extent, which is already taking place with men, but I often say that men are behind the times for one thing, I think that's fatuous and ridiculous and a, an attempt to make men seem um, stupid, which is sort of the opposite. And it's often a, uh, uh, feminists who are proponents of these concepts. Uh, you'll need to watch Family Guy to see the perception of men in society. I'm of the opinion that we need equality under the law and both socially, um, which is why I'm not a feminist, because many feminists don't actually believe in equality um, and reveal in that lack of belief a striking resemblance to the very gender that they say is the cause of all their problems. Most of the origins of the patriarchy come from the uh, the addition to agricultural of 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 agricultural life and dynamics to human civilization. They started around the time of the agricultural revolution, where women had to be owned as property, and the reason for that was immoral as it is, and probably immoral to many of the people who first instituted it, but they went away, went ahead with it anyway. And it's not like it happened overnight. It was probably a multi-generational trend because early humans had quite a, an egalitarian relationship between the genders. Um, was this idea that you're not hunting animals, you're not a hunter-gatherer anymore, you have land, and land means inheritance, and inheritance tends to mean sons, because men are physically stronger in most cases, and that's not something that men had any decision over any more than women did. Um, you had to have a son inherit the, inherit the land. In order to do that, you had to ascertain that that was your son. In order to do that, you had to be sure that his mother wasn't sleeping with anybody else, Ipso facto, bada bing, bada boom, you have the creation of the institution of marriage and the ownership of women as cattle, which has been going on for so long that it's actually one of the Ten Commandments, the sixth, I believe. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's possessions, his ass, his wife, and his ass is his donkey, by the way, because that's a direct injunction if it was his actual ass um, of one of the other laws in the Bible against homosexuality, which does exist there and which is why many people who are, sh who are gay... And of course, people who are women and people who believe in the rights of gays and women should reject Christianity outright, along with, by extension, all of the other monotheistic religions, um, because of course that's in the Old Testament, in addition to the Ten Commandments. I believe in its addition, uh, you know, solving the problem by changing attitudes towards child rearing and to some extent marriage. Uh, the oil companies' patents, which they have been amassing, undoubtedly amassing, um, over the last basically 100 years, give or take, a few decades, um, need to be seized outright. I mean, these are corporations. They do exist under the guise of legal immunity from prosecution at the individual level, which means you mess around with the corporation, the corporation gets fined. The corporation doesn't get to go to jail. But simultaneously, corporations are people. Try and work that one out. Uh, also, the seizure of agribusiness, 
patents would be great and the stripping as i say of all legal immunity from prosecution on the part of corporations that'd be fantastic if we could get that done you know we can avoid the the risk of conflict that will come about as a result of us not doing anything about these issues and we'll have viable ways to solve those problems controlling the population a little more easily through voluntarism not through force um and uh, you know we can save the fucking species because ultimately i just want to go out into space i want us all to go out into space and explore the stars together that's what i want that's the kind of world i want to live in and i talked about my politics earlier that is the goal of my political outlook and it's childish as fuck but i think it's a lot less childish than the political outlooks of many people that sit on the front bench in the house of commons so i'll see you guys later on thanks a lot for listening if you're still with me cheerio